Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Warcraft. This is the replay of a game I just played on Battle.net. But for some reasons I forgot to click the record button while I was playing it. So I was commentating the game, talking to the audience just like if I was actually recording the game. But I wasn't because I didn't click the record button. So. Because it was a cool game, uh, I'm going to. I decided to cast it to to cast the replay immediately. So we are here on Norwood, and I was already disappointed because I thought I had this map vetoed, but it wasn't vetoed for some reason. So this is a very large map. I don't really like it for one versus one. Because you have to scout, as you can see, I'm sending this this uh, peasant to scout all the various gold mines. Uh, your opponent could be here, 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 it could be here, it could be in five different locations. So, if you're not lucky with the scout, it's gonna take you a lot of time to determine his position and even worse if he's playing random and you don't know his race then you have absolutely no idea where your opponent is and especially you have no idea what to do because you don't know if it's orc or nile or undead or human in this case i knew it was orc he was uh, undead because i saw the race in the beginning of the game but i had no idea obviously where he was so as you can see, I'm pretty... No, I'm not lucky with the scout, but it's not even the worst scenario. The third location that I scout is his gold mine, so I immediately sent the peon back. Because I got the information that I wanted to have, and now... I'm ready to do what? I'm ready to essentially just creep a little bit. I'm gonna put forward, because I just played this game, I don't wanna see... Oh, again. There's nothing interesting in the early game. I'm just basically, I'm just getting this green camp here. Losing the footman? No, I didn't lose the footman. I'm pretty sure I saved this. Yeah. Uh, I saw that the creeps were attacking my footman, so I decided to start attacking my footman. To, I mean, I told. Foot went to attack one of my units, so the creep stopped aggroing him, and this way I saved him. I saved the other footman as well. So, so far I didn't lose any single unit, so that's good. I decide to creep this because I want to get the boots of speed. I get them, and at this point I do something that I would never do, which is, normally I would never do, which is building the shop at my own pace instead of the expansion, but I really need to heal up all those footies. And also this will allow me to grab uh, one heal scroll that I can use immediately after creeping. So there's a lot of value in this shop right here. Ready for action. Also I get another potion and now I go to creep the expo. Which I don't think will give me level 3. No, it didn't give me level 3 indeed. I just played this game, so of course I remember about this. Uh, so, in order to get level 3, I need to go here. You can see I have a lot of peasants, so building 2 towers is very easy for me. And the expansion was also very late, so I have a lot of lumber. And this was intentional. Getting a lot of lumber was intentional because I don't want to find myself in the position where I creep an expansion and then I don't have the wood to build towers and to build the expo and everything that I need. So as you can see I have plenty of wood. I even made another lumber mill here. No, I made the only lumber mill because I didn't have one here. And this lumber mill position here will also serve me as protection. Level 3 for the Mountain King is very nice. And now I decide to go and creep. So now I'm gonna put to normal speed because 
the action will start. So essentially I went here because it was the closest camp. I could also creep the orange camp here, but um, it's better to creep the mercenary camp because both camps have a golem, but the mercenary camp allows you to hire mercenaries immediately while these orange camp with it so you risk to lose a lot of units and then you can't replace them and as you can see he's pushing me and I see he's got a crippler so I'm pretty confident to TP in now because he's got two pins that he cannot heal because there's no death knight so here I come instantly bolt and kill the fiend and he TPs out immediately so he used TP and lost one fiend I used TP and didn't lose anything as valuable as a fiend I would say so good trade for me I'm messing towers in my main already have one level of masonry upgrade but I need more and yeah what's the threat here so at this point of the game I'm thinking I'm obviously worried about an expansion because I saw only one crypt lord and two fiends so it's a very small army, I'm pretty sure he's got an expansion <coughs> and he's pushing because he wants to buy time. Nonetheless, I know that even if I find the expo at this point, he's gonna have like towers and stuff like that. So I decide to go the tier 3 game, standard, mass knights. And I decided to go Griffins because I think I'm thinking with the Griffins I can kill his heroes very fast. He doesn't even have a Death Knight, so it's not like he can coil stuff. But nonetheless, I mean, it doesn't matter whether he has a Death Knight or he's got a Crypto. I see Fiends, so I decide to go Griffins. Obviously, if I saw mass destroyers, I wouldn't go Griffins, because destroyers are magic immune. But fiends, you will think fiends own Griffins, but I will say it depends. If you up, if you fully upgrade Griffins and you have more Griffins than he has fiends, you can quickly one shot those fiends. Especially, you must get the upgrade for the Griffins, the upgrade that allows you to shoot multiple hammers, magic hammers and kill several units faster because those hammers will bounce from one unit to another allowing you to do a lot of damage and a lot of additional damage that upgrade is really insane especially against walk but against all races really except neither of probably because they have triads and they have staff So I decided to go Griffins and, and Knights obviously, because they share the same attack upgrade, not the same defense upgrade. Mountain King is pretty well leveled up, on, it, on its way to level 5, and I decided to kill the Ring of Protection to make sure he doesn't steal it. I'm not too worried about the second hero, immediately going for type 3. Uh, 51 supply, I'm gonna have to kill a peasant, I guess. Because it's definitely not worth it to stay at 51, it makes no sense. So yeah, you can see I'm killing the peasant to be to stay at 50 now. Uh, I go here to creep, but I see it's expanding. As I was thinking. Uh, Mountain King is a bit low. However, this fiend is too juicy not to get it, so bold. Surround on the fiend. I easily get the fiend and he tries to burrow it, but it doesn't do it in time. I lose one footman, but it town portals and I don't use town portals, so I kill one fiend. I force a town portal and I only lose one footman and don't use town portal, so definitely another good trade for me. I see he's got a lot of towers, so we cannot have a huge army. Uh, he's probably investing a lot into defenses. 
Finally, I have the second leader, which is the Paladin. You can see I'm banking a lot of gold. Ideally, I would like to have like 2,000 gold before going into mass production, but I'm lacking a little bit of lumber. I'm very low on lumber, and on this map you cannot buy shredder, so... I would have either to build more peasants, which I don't want to do because I would have to go up. I would have to break up keep, or I have to be patient and essentially do with the lumber that I have. You can see I have a lot of peasants here, so I'm confident that just with the improved lumber I'm harvesting, I'm going to be fine. Again, just like happened before, as soon as I go and quit the mercenary camp, just in that moment he attacks me again, and this time his, his army looks bigger, he's got some siege, siege. he's got, how to, how to pronounce that, siege, 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 I'm not sure, however he's got those meat wagons, but I want to finish my camp, and I do, I get the ogre molar, I get the berserker, I get the good army, you can see the value of this lumber mill, blocking everything, and with mass peasants repairing it, it's a very good uh, wood shield. However, my TP is not very good because I TP in a horrible position. I can't attack anything, my footmen are all blocked. Mountain King is taking a lot of damage, needs to be microed back. Which I do. However, I already triggered the invulnerability potion on his death knight and now his death knight is exposed. He can't dive in into my towers, however Paladin is very low, as it's often the case. But there's plenty of mana on the Mountain King. Paladin falls. But this Death Knight needs to pay attention. I want this Death Knight. Stormbolt. And at this point I have to get this Death Knight because I'm invested so much time into that and I get it. And now it starts to look good for me, because I have still a lot of mana, I get two fiends, that's what's very good. Killing this fiend of the left on the left while bolting the other fiend almost at the same time, using the invul potion, because Mountain King gets foxed, but creep low. Falls. So, perfect trade for me, losing a level 1 hero and killing a level 4, I believe, if not even 5, I think it was 4. Killing his first hero and his second hero, which was level 2, another very good bolt, killing the fiend. And at this point I'm thinking, okay, that's GG, uh, he can't come back, he lost basically everything. I got almost 3000 gold, and now I'm switching to mass production, production. you can see double griffins here, 3 knights, 2 griffins, and it's time to must produce really here. Talking about upgrades, I can't see them now that I watched the replay. We'll see them, okay, it's 2-1, so I already have good upgrades. Mountain King is level 5, almost level 6. He's gonna have full mana very soon, and I'm fortifying the expo again, because keep, keep in mind that this is low wood, and this gold mine and this gold mine have a lot of gold. You can see I've been mining for quite some time, and I still have almost twenty thousand gold. So you really want to keep this gold mine for as long as you can, because. Basically, if you can keep this gold mine, you don't need a third expansion. Providing that you don't go up to 80 foot. If you stay below 80 foot and you have this expansion in a game like this, you're fine. Then it depends on, on the game, of course. But on this game, I know that if I can keep this expansion, I'm more than fine because I'm already almost level 6. I can produce, produce as much as I want. Upgrade. I only need upgrades now. And I decide to creep my Paladin, because my Paladin is only level 1. It's not scary at all. On its way to level 2 though. Yeah.
if I get the time, I want to creep the red camps here, which give very good items. But as soon as I go towards the orange camp, I see that he's got another expansion. This is not good. Because I'm sitting on two bases, he's on three bases. So that's an advantage that he has. I need to get rid of this economy here. He found portals, but it's too soon. He didn't have time to recover. So I'm very confident. That, look at this damage. It's insane. That's what I was talking about. You saw that those Griffons pretty much one-shotted uh, that Fiend, and I have only three Griffons. Just imagine if I had like 10 or 12, so or even just 8. Well, let's go slow now. Look at the damage of these Griffons on the Fiends. Basically, I'm only focused firing fiends because I want to get rid of the web, which is very nasty. As you can see, all of my three weapons are already web. But the fact is that I also have three knights on the ground, and these knights are 3 1. So even if I'm not microing the knights, I'm only microing the fiend, essentially, um, the griffons. Actually, everything is into A move into the fiends at this point. You can see everything is A moving into the fiends. But at the same time, I don't know the mechanics exactly, but the knights are also attacking the heroes, you can see, on the ground. Probably at this point I was I stopped focus firing. And boom, my army is just superior. Everything falls for him. Death Knight falls. Lich is about to fall as well. There's no man on the Mountain King. So maybe this Lich will survive. But this fiend definitely won't. So my paladin with this fight almost got, got almost level 3. Now there's a staff to save, to heal up my knight. And this expansion is toasted. And with this acolytes I'm gonna get level 3 on the paladin. So that's perfect. Now I'm in an even better fighting shape because I have the ultimate army so to speak. 3-1 Knights, 3-1 Griffins, so I'm very relaxed at this point, just get my expansion. But keep in mind he's got another expansion, which is the expansion with a lot of gold, just like mine. These three gold mines next to the fountain, they all give an insane amount of gold, so it's not like he doesn't have an economy anymore, he can't produce. And at this point I'm scared about worms because, not really scared, but I'm thinking, okay, the only thing you can do to stay into this game if you go is mass worms, because I have a lot of knights, knights of course uh, get destroyed by worms, and when undeads are desperate, as I already said in one of my previous videos, as you already saw in one of my videos, when they don't know what to do, they're desperate, they just go mass worms, okay? They just mass frost worms, that's their solution to everything. I don't know how to win this game. I got wrecked all game long. You know what? I'm just gonna go mass frost worms and try to win with basically the strongest unit that's in the game, which is the frost worm, okay? So that's what I'm expecting, and that's why I'm making even more griefings, I believe. But probably I'm I'm not I'm thinking about it, but I'm not mentally I'm avoiding the picture somehow because I'm also thinking okay, but if I get more griffons, I'm gonna get rid of those heroes even more easily. So let me get more griffons. So I decided to go for griffons instead of dragon rocks. So I'm following what was my initial plan. Knights are 3 2 now, by the way. Very strong. You can see that my expansion is almost finished, but again, look at this timing, so unfortunate. My expansion is barely finished, but not yet, and so I cannot town portal there, and it's got like something like 
six worms how many are there one two three four five worms only with one armor upgrade but when I saw those five worms I was like okay can't fight this I decided to go for this expansion to force a town port but was a mistake because I mean I get one ziggurat but I lost one dragon off for that or one weaver and he got too many towers I was hoping that he didn't react so fast I wanted to snipe something before town port only but I didn't so now I'm really committing to Dragonos, as you can see, two here, one here. Glory to the Blood Elf. Glory. Staff in the Night. I have three Dragonox, but I still don't want to fight. I want to have at least six. But he's not giving me the time, he's pushing immediately. And that's a lot of worms, he's got six. And basically because I was busy with the macro and everything, I didn't have time to hotkey properly the Dragonos, all of them, so I'm doing the best that I can do here. But those worms, they have a lot of HP, they just don't die. Still I have a lot of knights in the field because it's not focusing them, it's purely focusing my air. And so the knights are doing a lot of damage to his heroes, that's why you always want to have a ground army and a hair army in this scenario. So I still, I'm still at 62, but I cannot finish this hero because I'm busy microing my air. And those worms just don't die. And the death net is full, it's got a lot of mana, keeps coiling those fiends, those worms and the knights just melt and the paladin falls because I'm busy chasing this creep lord and I was sure I was gonna get him but I didn't because this freaking creep lord's got good speed and apparently seems to be faster than my mountain king which makes no sense because there's no unholy aura so I don't know why this creep lord was faster than my mountain king really Move speed fast. Okay, so a creep lord is apparently a fast hero. According to this replay. I didn't know about that. So Mountain King is average and Creep Lord is fast. I always thought and assumed that the Creep Lord was slow because it's fat. But it's not slow. So, I couldn't outrun the, outrun the Creep Lord. If I knew it, if I knew this detail, I would have stayed here with the Mountain King and I would have focused to that man. However, I still got my Expo. Um, I have a strong hero. The only problem is those worms. Here's the thing. Worms are insanely strong if you don't have time, if you hit a timing attack. But once you know that your opponent is committing to those damn worms, now you got the counter, and the counter is mass Dragonos. I just need, I purely need numbers, okay? I don't need to do anything special in this game anymore to win it. The only thing I need in this game to win it is to have enough time to mess a sufficient amount of Dragonos, which by the way are 3-2 upgrade. And if I get the time, I'm gonna win the game, and if I don't get the time, I'm gonna lose it. That's about it. I have the gold. Uh, I think it could catch the dragon off, but it doesn't. And I have a lot of towers with level 2 misery. So as you can see here, now I'm running to the tavern because I want to get my paladin back. I know I cannot fight yet because my army is all over the place, the dragonos are not united together, so I can't fight all of those worms. And certainly I can't fight them aside from my towers, but 
I don't know why he's pushing here. It could mess more worms, but it doesn't. Okay, can't mess more because it's at 99. And he's expanding here. Okay, now that I watched the replay, I noticed this, so. He's already at 100 because he's got the third hero. So he's 100 foot worms, purely worms basically, and the heroes. And I'm at only 65. But he decides to push. Because he's scared about my heroes, I believe. So that he doesn't stand a chance on the ground. And he loses one worm to the towers. A big mistake, he should have focused the towers first. And as soon as I see that big mistake, I'm willing to jump here because now he's got one less worm. I got a lot of dragon oaks finally. And I think against this low number of worms I can fight. And a town portal. Immediately get another worm, but three more reinforcements are coming from behind, so again, ultimate is cold. Paladin is back, but he's getting wrecked by those, those um, carrier bills, but not completely, and keep in mind I still got the invul potion that I didn't use before because I was busy chasing the pit lord, and this time as I told you, Dragonos dominate. Crypto is low. Leech gets focused. Leech falls. Paladin is about to fall but survives with the staff. Very well done by me. And Crypto falls and he leaves the game. So this goes to show that if you play undead you can get smashed all game long because this guy got smashed all game long. He failed every single trade, every single trade was in my advantage, <clears throat> he lost every single fight until the point where he's masked the world. So he lost every single fight in this game, but somehow he was able to mass worms thanks to the expansion. And even if he was behind all game long, thanks to the frost worms, he did an insane damage just because my 80 foot army of knights and I believe six griffons wasn't able to kill six frost worms, even with. Uh, good hero levels, which means a strong mount again because the paladin was only level three. But paladin level three is strong. Okay, it's low holy light level two is strong. So my superior army wasn't able to kill those frost verbs. So I risked losing a game that I absolutely deserve to win from beginning till the end just because of frost worms and that's why you always 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 go cry for neighbors against undead at least on battle maybe not on other servers uh, like on w3 arena i've seen most undeads they go mass destroyers so obviously dragon ox and Grief was not good against mass destroyers because you can't attack them with magic damage, you can't uh, use aerial shackles on destroyers, so it won't work. You have to go gyros and knights or something else or tanks. But on Battle.net, almost every single undead goes frostworms. So when you control the game, when you dominate the early game and the late game, you just want to make those freaking 
trifle, trifle never is just to avoid situation like this where you dominate the game and then you risk losing it just because of how strong, how insanely bullshit strong those crossbars are. And when the game finished, I was like, yeah. And I was very disappointed that I couldn't record it in real time because it was so good in the moment that I saw him tapping out, freaking out dead, freaking frost worms. But still, I got the replay. And I enjoyed watching the replay because I saw more details that I didn't notice about then I didn't notice while I was playing, for example, the fact that it was already 100 foot here and that it was about to get another, another expansion and the fact that my 65 foot army was able to beat his 100 foot army with triple hero just by fighting with the level 6 mountain king and next to the towers and with full upgrades. That's very interesting because I don't believe it was 3-3. So I had less supply but I had superior superior upgrades and like I said before if you have enough Dragonox to outmass the worms then you win the fight. 